my name is James Liao. I'm the co-founder of uh, Pika8, and I want to take the opportunity to introduce Pika8, Pika8 is technology solution and products. I also want to take a, a little bit of time to uh, explain why we believe networking isn't hard. It should be all about software. So before we get into the technology side, and I think that uh, I will just take the, a moment to bring everybody up uh, to update everybody about PKI's progress and where we are today. So we started the, the PKI journey uh, a while back. And in the past several years, we've been uh, working on the software side of PKI. Uh, we have already helped our customers to put tens of thousands of switches into their production environment. Through the work, uh, people really recognize us that we are fully compliant with Cisco, but even more importantly, because we are software centric, we bring software Cisco to the market. And why is the software Cisco? Because people believe uh, our, our software has to enable white box switches as compliant as Cisco as possible because they are worried about interoperability problem. But in the meantime, because we're software centric, we provide a lot more to the, uh, to the networking operation. We automate the operation. We help people to get more data out of the operation. Even more importantly, we can integrate with the software from third party. And this is becoming more and more important because people really don't want to deal with network. People really want to have the software to work with software, then networking will become invisible. So we're gonna go a little bit deeper into the example, how we help our customers. So far, we have more than 1000 customers worldwide and um, the biggest customers we have, uh, each one of them has more than 3000, which is deploying to the production network. So we are growing and uh, helping our customer to build bigger and better network. All right. So a little bit into the product side, our product groups include the two major product groups. Uh, the first one is uh, MCOM controller, which is a controller to help our customers to manage the network. We don't want people to deal with switching, routing, each one, one by one. We help them to build a control center that they can manage the network directly. And in the meantime, we build a really full blown operating system to help our customers to deploy the software switch to any layer of the, uh, the network. And if you look at the combination of uh, controller and switches together, the OS together, we help our customer to use the white box switches and build up uh, each, uh, different layers of, uh, uh, of uh, network. And then we enable virtualization, we enable security, we enable um, uh, automation and uh, telemetry into our customer's environment. And we'll go a little bit deeper into this one, but before we jump into the technical side, I want to do a, a very interesting comparison why software switching is different from the hardware switching. And while everybody is interested in knowing what is the difference between the technical side, let me just jump into a very simple uh, example that how software is different from the hardware. If you look into the, the license scheme of the legacy network, you will quickly realize that uh, a lot of customers are telling us this. Uh, figuring out the license scheme of the, the network vendor is like doing a PhD thesis. <laughs> you have to continue to learn what they're doing. You have to continue to learn different schemes so the whole network planning is very, very complex. And I think all of us have the experience before. You want to start planning for the network that you have today. And you say, in the next 12 months, I'm going to deploy like 200 switches into my campus. Then the first question you ask is that, what is the, the, uh, the feature I want to deploy, right? So people say, okay, I'm going to replace 200 of them. I'm going to pick a... a a uh, gigabit ethernet switch. And then I have to figure out that uh, I'm going to deploy network access control into my network this year. Then you start to talk to vendor, they give you a quote and they start to ask you, okay, this is the access network. How many aggregation network do you need? Because I need to quote you a different model. 
And then how many core switches you need? I need to quote you a different model. How do you deal with the, the management software? I need to get, get you a different model. So once you do the, all the homework and then you figure out there are a lot of hidden costs that even you have to get, get down to how many power supply you, you, you need for each switch it, and then eventually you come up with the price sheet. And then you go back to your boss and say, okay, this is the plan. And your boss say, oh, no, this doesn't work because uh, we're gonna deploy uh, a faster Wi-Fi this, week, uh, this year. So we're gonna change the one gig ethernet to 2.5 G ethernet. Now you have to redo it because your SS layer is faster. It's a different model. It comes with a different software. And then it's a different, uh, if you are using Cisco 4K, now you have to upgrade to Cisco 9K and uh, the aggregation layer has to change as well. So you do all the homework and after that, your boss say, oh, by the way, we also have to deploy a lot of, uh, a lot of IoT. So we need a lot more uh, PoE, uh, PoE ports than the, the regular ports. So you have to do the homework again. So through the homework, uh, you finally get down to a list that, that with a lot of things you don't need. And then people start to question that, is this a scam or <laughs> this is real? So by being a software vendor, we bring a totally different license scheme to the game. We basically tell people, hey, you don't have to struggle with that. You don't have to really say, I need 2.5G or, or 1G PoE or non-PoE. We give you one license for everything. So let's say you need 200 licenses. We'll give you a quote of uh, 200 pack. And then you go figure out that if you need PoE, it's the same license. You, need, you don't need PoE, it's the same license. You want to upgrade from gig, gigabit ethernet to 2.5G, it's the same license. You want to deploy it to aggregation switch, it's the same license too. You want to deploy it to core switch, it's the same license too. 100G, 400G, 1G, 25G, 2.5G, PoE, non-PoE, we don't care. We're a software vendor. The OS is a mechanism for us to help our customers to automate their network. So we don't want to make it complicated. We basically come up with a very simple scheme that you buy the license, one license you install on anywhere you want to go. Even better, let's say you run your switch for, for five years, for two years, let's say just for two years, you realize you really have to migrate some of the switches from non-POE to POE. So all you have to do is to go out there and then find the vendors and the vendors tell you, oh, uh, this is the quote of the hardware. You take the hardware, put it in, and then you migrate your license. So you take commission, decommission your old license and then put it onto the new switches. It will start working. And MCON is going to help you to do all the migration, including all the configuration, all those things over to the new switch. You don't have to struggle with that. You don't have to worry about if I change to PoE now, do I have to change all the configuration? Everything is simple and straightforward. There is no hidden cost. There is no hidden agenda. We help our customers to build a network and continue to expand the network, keep it operated. That's what we have. And even even more interestingly, now everyone is struggling with the supply chain. Some of the, our customers finally get down to the, the license, the negotiation, all the things, and then uh, the vendor comes back and say, hey, we're gonna deliver this one 400 days later. <laughs> so if you deal with that, you start to realize that how are vendors, not that they are playing tricks, so they have a lot of limitation. And by separating the hardware from the software, by introducing a much simpler license scheme, then now we have an opportunity to help our customers to focus on the network operation instead of trying to deal with those quotes or, uh, or license questions all the time. So that's one of the exciting things that uh, we bring to the market. And by being a software vendor, we help our customers to deal with all the network operation instead of struggling with how do I get the quote straightforward. Is there some legal definition there that, you know, you know puts a time limit on that someplace? Or Good. Really forever. Do we have, do we play trick on the statement, right? So no, we don't play trick. It's a perpetual license. If you say, so some of the customers, for, for example, they say, hey, I'm buying a one gig switch. 
I put the license on the one gigi switch. Now I'm done with one gigi switch. Really, I have to upgrade the switch to 10 gigabit. Do I have to pay more? No, it's a perpetual license. Every year, do we make money out of that? Yes, we do, because everybody has to make money. The way we make money is very easy. We provide you better software. We provide you better features. So you can apply the features, not only on access network, not only on aggregation network. If you want to put it on the core network, enable 400G, you can do it. So from our side, every year we're collecting uh, support and maintenance and upgrade, uh, upgrade uh, cost. That's per license too. So do we sell more uh, licenses? No, we don't. Every year we do collect uh, the support and maintenance. This is just like any, uh, any hardware company, any software company. But that's how we do it. We don't overcharge our customer by saying that, hey, your license is for one gigi only. Now it's a 10 gigi. No, we don't do that. Great. Well, actually, another uh, when we talk to our customers, one of the customers actually asked me this interesting question. They say, hey, I'm, I'm going to run this one on the 100G switch. And 100G switch is really expensive. Are you sure you're charging me the same license cost? as the one gigi access cost? And we say, yes, it's a software. It's the same software. And the maintenance costs don't change either? No, it doesn't. So it's the same cost that you put on the 100G, you put, even put on the 400G, it's the same cost. The cost difference on the 100G and 400G should be higher. It has nothing to do with us. It's the same software. And to be honest, if we go down a little bit deeper, we're gonna realize that the feature set on the access is as complicated as the 400G switches. So that actually makes us think that what is the point of charging people more software money on the 400G than the 100G or even 1G, right? So, so that's, a, that's basically how we help our customers to move forward with the better software. Okay, very quickly into the architecture side, uh, there's no, nothing surprising uh, for people that the controller is built with the open architecture. And we use the latest and greatest uh, software architecture. You have a web interface to allow you to use GUI, but that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is that for every tiers of networking software, we build the API into, the, uh, into our management platform. What does that mean? Why is this important? Because we don't build the software for human only. We build the software for other software. Imagine that you are running the software to manage your network. In the past, you use the human to operate the, the GUI and then say, okay, I want to deploy the switch. Now imagine that you have a Slack or you have a Lark that you can issue the command directly to the, to the controller the controller is going to double check your command and confirm that that's what you want to do. And for example, you say, I want to upgrade 20 switches tonight. Give me the list of the switches. They give you the switch. You say, no, the, I, I think we should just do top 10. So they give you 10 and you say, good, schedule to upgrade tonight to version 3.4. And then they will just give you the command. Can you confirm you really want to do this one? and then you can just issue the command to MCOM. This is how networking should be. It should not be networking. It should be part of your infrastructure. And we use open API on everything, database between the database, between the, uh, the controller and the switch. Uh, we, use the M, uh, we use the Ansible API. So everything is secured, everything is automated. On the OS side, this just looks like a typical OS, but you will probably capture a couple of things. The first one is that we build a full set of uh, protocols. So we don't separate the protocols by hardware. We don't say, hey, you use this version for the access, you use this version for the aggregation, you use this version for core. We use one suite, you can do anything you want on the protocol side. But most important thing is not the protocol. Procall will continue to invest and make, it, make sure it's compliant to standard. And we will make sure that it's interoperable with all the existing network. But the most important thing is the API. We built a lot of APIs inside. Many of the APIs support legacy management system, but even more APIs are helping our customer to integrate uh, advanced uh, 
software to integrate with the, the switch. So for example, we recently worked on the uh, GNMI gRPC to do the telemetry span, uh, streaming. And this is one of the things that the people are doing with the network right now. You, you want to stream out the, the, uh, the data, but you don't want to limit customer to say, you have to use my analytics software, or this is the analytics software I have qualified. You can only use this one. We allow customers to bring their own software integrate with our switches or controllers to get the data. And we also work on the, the REST API so that people can bring more and more software integrate with the switch together through secure connections, through very automated uh, fashion that you can actually bring all the software together. So I uh, let me take a, a quick check on the uh, this, uh, give you a, a quick overview of uh, some of the success we have in the market. Uh, one of the, the success we have is with a huge uh, Fortune 100 uh, customer. They have uh, tens of uh, even several dozens of buildings uh, in the city. And one of the new building has seven floors. And what they want to do is they want to deploy 100 switches into this building and interact with the other buildings. All other buildings have been previously built, built with the Cisco infrastructure, SD access to be specific. And they want to make sure that we can interoperate with the Cisco and make sure that we don't end up being an isolated island and they have to manually help, uh, build the, the system. So we use the controller to do the, the testing. And then after that, we deploy the, the whole system, the whole building module by module, pot by pot into the system. We interact with the Cisco controller we interact with the Cisco uh, NAC controller as well, specifically. And this is a wild success because it accelerates their deployment time. It assures their, uh, their uh, compliance with the Cisco. And even more importantly, from now on, this building will have self-check every day. These are the things they really need besides just using Cisco. They want to have automation. They want to have a way that they can continue to move forward with, uh, with automation. Another success is a distributed uh, branch office. This is the top three service providers in the US. They have 4,200 uh, 4, stores uh, in the US. And you can imagine how difficult it is to support a distributed network like this. In the past, the only way to, to handle this kind of stores is that make sure the store's network is as dumb as possible. You never touch it. If you want to install anything, get my approval and don't touch anything. Don't even try to move the cable. But with our technology, we allow them to use the controller to manage all the distributed side. If you need to deploy a new switch to the, to the store, you take the white box switch. We help you to go through the provisioning of the switch and eventually help you to automatically recognize the switch and deploy the configuration to the switch. We will do a, a little bit demo on this one at the end of the presentation as well. But these are the success story that more and more people start to recognize what they really need is not whether I'm running an independent NOS on the white box or I'm using a legacy vendor. The real thing they need is a software ecosystem that a lot of software can work together to make networking smart. They don't want to deal with the network. This is one of the key things about SDN. The SDN is not about network, it's about software. Once you have the ecosystem to work together as a, as a software suite, and they can help each other to collect the data, analyze the data, then you essentially can start to move the, the, the network operators focus on planning, on scheduling, on how to build a better network to support other applications. 